I am based in New England. I live in Vermont currently. I've lived in New England my whole life, um, but I've given a number of projects, uh, excuse me, presentations throughout you know the country talking about designing for for high winds. And sometimes people you know will raise the question, well, you're you're from New England. What do you know about high winds? Well, just to uh, to start the presentation out on a light note, um, this is actually the top of Mount Washington, which is the highest mountain in New Hampshire, the highest mountain in uh, all of New England, and it's only about 6,300 feet in elevation, but as you can see here on the plaque that's attached to the gift shop here at the top of Mount Washington, uh, in 1934 they recorded a 231 mile per hour wind gust. So even if it's only isolated on Mount Washington, uh, New England can get some high wind speeds. And as you can see here, you know, this is how we deal with, with uh, high wind speeds in New England. We just chain the entire building right down to the top of the mountain. So we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and get started, but I figured it'd be nice to start out on a light note. This is the course description that you probably read through when you decided to sign up for this webinar, as well as the learning objectives. We're going to be talking about five topics today. Um, the first two will be before our first break. And I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about the actual process of calculating the wind loads. I'm going to place most of the emphasis of this webinar on four aspects of wood frame design and how to resist those wind loads. But we, do, we will do a brief recap on some of the important aspects of calculating wind loads. So we'll jump into that section now. Uh, this presentation is based on the 2015 IBC. I think probably that's the majority of jurisdictions in the country are utilizing that. Not to say that it doesn't apply to the, this webinar, wouldn't apply to other versions. Uh, but the 2015 IBC does reference uh, ASCE 710. There are some methods in IBC 2015 for calculating wind loads, but most people will default to using ASCE 710 for those wind load calculations. Now, if you've worked with ASCE 705 in the past, you probably are familiar with how everything was contained nicely in Chapter 6 of that document as it pertains to calculating wind loads. Now, now ASCE 710 looks significantly different. You know, there's it's been broken out into five chapters. There's actually a sixth chapter on wind tunnel testing. Uh, there's also an appendix. So there's, there's just a complete reformatting of how the wind load calculation section of this document looks. Um, it's also the other significant change from 705 to 710 is that we've gone from a, an ASD level wind load calculation to now an ultimate level. So what, what looks like we've jumped up in magnitude of wind loads, you know, before most of the country was looking at, say, 90 mile an hour wind speed. Now that's 115 mile an hour wind speed. It's not that the wind loads have gone up in magnitude, it's that we've switched from the baseline calculation being ASD to now being ultimate. In the end though, there's really not that much of a difference in, in the net results of the wind loads. Using ASC 705, you can see for calculating um, ASD level wind forces, you just use the net W, which is the net wind force. That's because you are already ASD level forces. Now for going to 710, you're basically taking a 0.6 multiplier to get from LRFD or ultimate wind loads down to a, an allowable service level. So in the end, you can see here, if before you're using 90 mile an hour wind speeds, now it looks like it's higher, but if you do the conversion factor, you're 89 versus 90. So most of the country has very, very similar results in terms of what the net wind loads on a structure are between 705 and 710. There are a few areas of the country where the basic wind speeds did change, uh, but the majority of the country is the same or very similar. I like to point out this, this tool uh, for engineers to use as a free resource. Um, I've, I've used a version of this website for years. It's always been a great tool, the ATC, uh, the Council website. Um, ironically, today, I believe, is the first day that this version went live. It's also the last day that the old version was going to be available. Uh, so this may look different to you if you've um, been using the old version of the ATC website to calculate wind loads. This is the new version. The new URL is down at the bottom, but it's a great tool. It's a free tool. You can go in and calculate uh, what the wind loads are. You can see here I've just punched in a generic city, Charleston, South Carolina. You can also go more specifically to an address or latitude longitude and it will provide you, you can see here this is based on 716, but you can also scroll down 
uh, using the scroll bar here, and it will also provide wind loads, wind speeds based on uh, 710 as well as 705. So a great resource to you, a uh, free resource for calculating wind loads.